Welcome back everyone, Toys Shiz here, and I am back yet again for yet another McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse video, and today it comes courtesy of my friends over at McFarlane Toys. We're going to be checking out the entire new DC Multiverse Platinum Edition wave, which I already hear the grunts, the groans, the eye rolls. Hopefully, hopefully, if you want these, these will be relatively easy to come by. Now, first and foremost, we have Shining Knight. For those of you unfamiliar, this is the female version of Shining Knight. This is not exactly Sir Justin. It's kind of like a Hawkman slash Loki situation, that kind of dealio. So this is either which way, Yastina or Yastine, part of the Seven Soldiers of Victory. So more of the more modern comics dealing with the whole Shining Knight situation. And here's the barcode to scan in stores if you are after this version of Shining Knight. And next up we have, and I can honestly tell you, I wasn't the one asking for this character, but I'm sure somebody out there was. We have Effigy, which is a Green Lantern villain, specifically a Kyle Rayner Green Lantern villain, which is very interesting. Kind of has the powers of Green Lanterns, but swap it out for fire. That's basically the whole dealio with Effigy. And then of course we have, and I'll save you some time, it's the best one, it's the coolest one, it's the figure that everyone's gonna want because it's the question. Good old Vic Sage makes his DC Multiverse debut. Part of the whole DC classic line of the DC Multiverse. You can see more modernish artwork of the question on the backside, and here's the barcode. And if these go up online, I will put links down in the description below. So. This is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the entire new DC Multiverse Platinum Edition wave, The Shining Knight, Effigy, and The Question by McFarlane Toys. And just before we get started, I want to say a quick thank you to everyone out there who has continued to tune in to my YouTube channel. It's blowing up. It's doing great. I'm very happy with it. But on the off chance you're new here and want to subscribe, I'd be happy to have you. We talk about DC Multiverse, all kinds of stuff. Guarantee you'll find something here that you like. So without further ado, here's everything out of the packaging. Effigy, The Question, and Shining Knight. And surprisingly, I'm just going to tell you, there is some wonk, as expected, with McFarlane Toys, but it's a pretty solid wave of characters. With the Shining Knight, you get a giant sword. I can't honestly tell you if this is reuse or this is new, but it's got some nice ornate details. It's got the hilt, it's got the brown, it's got the silver, the gold, the red. It's a nice weapon accessory, especially for a character like Shining Knight. Now, when you look at the sword that she uses, it's kind of, sort of, looking like it. It's like, yeah, and sure, why not? For a character like this, though, uh, I give a little bit more leeway because I like the Sir Justin version of the Shining Knight, the old school kind of character. So for this, it's like, yeah, she looks cool, looks cool. That's a cool looking sword. That's really all I got. In terms of what they did here to create this version of Shining Knight, it's going to use the Flashpoint Wonder Woman body for the most part. They've given her a new head portrait with the horns. That looks pretty cool. So various little components that they've added to then create a new character. But overall, in the face portrait, it's female and male at the same time. Again, if you know the history of this character, of what they're kind of going for there. The horns are cool. You get plenty of articulation, plenty of ornate details. I like the big old bendy horns. That's pretty cool. I just dig that. There's a little bit of black paint on the helmets. Again, the eyes, the lips, everything is painted really decently. And you got the little red ruby gem right there on the top of the helmets. As you look at the rest of the costume, these are going to be reused for the cape down to the boots and whatnot. So it's different enough. I like the red they've chosen. I like that they put a little gold strip on the base of the cape. That's a nice touch. You got some black accents amidst the gold. Surprisingly, there's a large amount of paint on this figure. More, let's just say more of that. And I don't particularly like the way that the cuffs go into the fleshy parts of the hand. I feel like they could have done that just a little bit better. Overall, pretty happy with this figure, including all the belts, the chain mail. Again, the boots are gonna be largely reused. You got peg holes on the bottom, but 
for a character I definitely wasn't asking for for the version of this character. I think they've done quite a great job. And again, as you kind of look at the Flashpoint Wonder Woman to then how they've kind of reused this figure, yes, some elements could have used a little bit more paint, like the bands, perhaps the elbow pads. It's gonna be the usual type of McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse articulation, nothing crazy, except for the amount of articulation you get in the midsection. Then you got the knees, you got kinda sorta some rotation in the boots, more so up and down, you got the whole toe articulation. So again, for the character, for what this figure is, it's pretty solid. Next up, for Effigy, I really like the power effects that they gave Effigy. This is one of those instances, when I talk about Marvel Legends and their X-Men, we'll just say, or Spider-Man, not giving him webbing. For a character like Effigy, this is all you would need, just some fire effects. It tells us who this character is, what the powers of this character is, all the fire effects clip on right onto his fisted hands. It's pretty cool. I like the blast effect. That is a nice touch. What would have been cool is to give him a flight stand just to kind of give him a little bit better presence on your shelf. But in totality, again, not a character that I certainly was asking for, but I'm happy to have this more obscure, and I gotta be careful with how I say obscure these days. Effigy is obscure, just as Hugo Strange is obscure. But what they did with this new head portrait for this reuse of a body, he's kinda got the whole Ghost Rider flame hair going on with a little bit of a Joker, all pale white skin grin. It is fun. And I'm gonna talk about the teeth because I always seem to dwell on that. That's a great smile, it's well sculpted, the eyes are creepy, the paint on it is creepy, and you get plenty of head rotation, so there you go. Well done. The rest of the body is not gonna be anything to really write home about. He does have some yellow dry brushing on the front, I guess to kind of give him that yellowy, flamey kind of effect. I guess, it's not really great. They could have left that off, but I guess it's something. It doesn't go to the backside of the character, just FYI. Although, I do like the gauntlets, the wrists, the fisted hands, that's totally cool. The shoulders, and again, the, the whole articulation scheme is not gonna be anything to write home about. Within the ab crunch, mine was a little bit stuck, so going forward didn't do much. Going back is where it kinda finally loosened up, so, it kind of works, it's again, nothing to write home about, but it's something, the paint, the red details of the costume, the legs, the knees, the diaper, it's not that great. This one falls under, sure, they did just enough to bring a totally obscure character to life, they gave him powers, the articulation works, the head portrait is really detailed, so again, that kind of falls under what Marvel Legends does sometimes, where you reuse a body. There's not too many detailed elements as far as the costume goes, it's largely just paint, and then you have a overly detailed head portrait. Is it a huge problem? No, but I really wish that in that case with an overly detailed head, they would apply it a little bit more to the body type. And then finally, that brings us to the best character from Justice League Unlimited, Vic Sage, The Question. And there's no question about it. Yes, out of the three figures here, he is the best. Although I really do like Effigy as well. I love what they did with the face portrait. You have the blue fedora. They gave him a little bit of a shading underneath so it sits nicely around the eyes, gives him a more mysterious look. I totally dig that. You have elements of a nose, a mouth, you got the ears and the jawline, but I think they did a great job in bringing that head portrait to life for a character like The Question. And as far as the rest of the body goes, yes, they nailed that as well. From his yellow shirt to the black tie, to his blue suit, down to the pants, to his black shoes, peg holes on the bottom. But it's really the light blue trench coat that of course brings The Question to life. Be very careful with the slit right here, you don't wanna go too high with it, move it too much, they could see that tearing uh, if you do it wrong. And again, in terms of the articulation, it's not gonna be anything crazy. He's largely a reuse of the Dark Knight Joker figure with some new parts and pieces, but there's enough there to really differentiate him. So for that alone, that's pretty darn cool, but I just love that we have a question. He comes with one fisted hand, and then on the other hand, it's a trigger finger hand, but that can also be a clue-holding hand if you'd 
kind of stretch it a little bit, but it can also be a fedora dip in hand. So I totally like that. Or maybe he gets in a little rope-a-dope situation with Lex Luthor. He doesn't come with his removable tie to do whatever he was going to do. But like I said, overall, the colors, the look, they've nailed the question. The character is there. I'm overall very happy with it. Although, if I had to nitpick it, which you know I'm going to do, I think of anything extra hands. There's not really anything too much in terms of, let's say, accessories, maybe some clues, maybe a removable fedora, a hat, something like that, maybe an aerosol spray, but I think they nailed it for the most part. Now, in terms of scalature for, let's say, Martin Van Wick, a.k.a. Effigy, yes, if you've assembled a Green Lantern core, he will go nicely with them, especially, like I said, Kyle Rayner, although hopefully this time around, Kyle can stop Effigy from burning down the Hollywood sign. Although, don't get Effigy anywhere around the Spectre. That's not going to end well for old Martin Van Wick. In terms of the question, which... Again, I'm always going to bring up Justice League, Justice League Unlimited. That's just an amazing cartoon and sticks with me always to this day. The whole DCAU. But yes, the question looks great with all these heroes. And he stands appropriate, I think, within all the heights. Minus Martian Manhunter. In terms of the female Shining Knight from Batgirl to Wonder Woman and then just to kind of throw Superman in there. Yes, you could also put her with Etrigan if you'd like. But yes, this one is definitely going to be a little bit more obscure for your shelves unless they start making some more obscure characters, which I don't know if they're going to do that. We will see. But it's not a winged horse. But if you have a white horse and maybe you want to glue some wings to it, yes, this Shining Knight can sit atop of horse if you'd like to display her as such. And so that is going to wrap it up for my quick look at the brand new wave of McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Platinum Edition figures. Three figures to grab, all of them totally random. None of them are store exclusive, so it all depends on where and how and when they show up. But like I said, I will put links down below if they go for pre-order, yada, yada. Make it easy on you. Hopefully, they'll just be easy to come by if you are after them. But as always, you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything DC Multiverse. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, McFarland Toys, if you are listening, and I know you are, you really got to bring it back on the Platinums. Don't go too Platinum heavy. You're driving people nuts. You got to keep it easy. Collectors like it easy, especially in this day and age. But thanks for sending over the figures for this video. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.